Next we have The Perfect Horse by Elizabeth Letts. Very nice. The background might be a bit tedious, but it does explain why the Nazis were so hell-bent on getting any horse that they could, that they considered worthy of their silly blood thing. Rowdy people, come on. Um, however, once you get past the, the general repugnantness of the Nazis, the book is actually very riveting. The stud and the school were two separate things. You had the mares and foals at the stud, and the school had the stallions. The two were, they had this system for, for centuries. The, um, but with the fall of the Habsburgs in uh, World War One, and between the two world wars, they had rebuilt a great deal of their horse stock. But then, uh, World War II was utterly devastating. They lost so many horses. Now, the role that the U.S. Army played is both good and bad. Yes, they rescued the horses, but once they had the horses, they didn't quite know what to do with them. Now, a little research, a little asking questions would have told them exactly what to do with the horses. Polish horses, the Polish Steins, the Arabians, the Russian ones, uh, all those horses came from somewhere and they should have been taken back to somewhere. They weren't. And some of them were sold off and just ignored once the army decided to disband their horses, their horse remount stations, and uh, sent them over to the Department of Agriculture, which of course had no use for horses, you know. Uh, being totally dedicated to becoming mechanized in all aspects of farming, only to find out Farm horses don't compact the soil quite as bad as a tractor does. Or one of those multi-million dollar combines. Still, it was a very gallant thing to do in a very ugly war. For example, the stable at which the second cavalry of the of Patton's army went to get the mares and foals, had a concentration camp nearby. And concentration camps were all over Poland. Not that the Poles had any choice. So their subsequent behavior in politics this past year, 2018, is a bit silly. Of course you had no choice. We know what the SS was like. To refuse was to die. Nazis are psychopaths and sociopaths, let's face it. Now, the author writes more reporter than poet. However, you do get the emotional content in the book because she must have had access to personal papers, diaries, mementos, and she must have spoken to some those that were still alive. Um, she obviously had visited these places because you do get to see the aftermath. Uh, the Polish Arabian breeding station, which I had known about for decades now. Uh, yes, that has been rebuilt. However, the one from which in Czechoslovakia, the one, f well, Czech Republic, the one from which the horses, the mares and foals and young stallions had been taken, has fallen into disuse, as has the local church, but such as communism.
lunch must be ready. Either that or somebody changed batteries and they're testing it. I do apologize. I shall be back. Yes, it was lunch. So, recommended if you come across this book, buy it. You might enjoy it more than even I did. Thank you for watching. I hope you'd enjoyed it. Please come again.